Okay, today what I'm going to do is set up my power driver here to dismantle the flat screen. I have been promising, and I've got several thousand hits, thank you very much, on my dismantling of the, uh, and the breakdown of the color TV. Well, now what I'm going to do is dismantle the flat screen. So here it is. This is a general broken flat screen. It took me a while to get my hands on a broken one. Hence why it's taken a while to make this video. I've never actually opened this thing up before. One of the first things you might want to do is not cut off the cord because a lot of these have useful power supplies that put out 28 volts. We have mercury vapor bulbs in here you don't want to break. What I'm going to do first is rip out the major screws by putting this in reverse. It. This is a driver, it makes it pretty quick. I just got these thanks to my dad. So, just a note you pull out all the screws, usually they're marked by an arrow. So, the arrow on the screw there, you want to remove all of those. You can see right here. Most of them have arrows. Arrows show the technicians if you're going to repair it or what have you. Where show the people that make it. There's one right there. It's kind of hard to see, but it's right where the bit is. Okay, so once we get all the screws out, we got to pop the top off. I'm going to do that here in a second. Now, I actually know less about this technology. But I'm going to tell you as much as I do see in here. I've never been in here before, so let's see what I've got. Sometimes there's some inner latching problems. You don't always have the, uh, the right screw. Always all the off, but it looks like I've got... Here we go! Oh, look at that. Nice. So we got some stuff in here. Now, the LCD panel is on the bottom, and... We can see here we got a lot of a lot of parts, interesting parts here. Filters, here's our hot side, high voltage. So this is 120 volts coming in. It's very these are all one-to-one -one filters for radio frequency. So then they look like transformers, but they actually have all these capacitors to ground out radio frequency. We got two relays, three relays, big honking. Uh, bridge rectifier. So this thing with a heat sink can handle a lot of power. Um, what is that? Looks like a transformer. Another high frequency switching transformer. Um, very likely this is the high voltage. Yes it is. The high voltage tube assembly. So this puts out several thousand volts here to run the mercury uh, vapor lights that are inside the, in the bottom of this. So these are high voltage transformers, but you don't want to put as much power as you do into a flyback. These will run at, oh, I don't know, 20 kilohertz or something. And they run them through capacitors uh, on the other side, and they just take it straight off. They don't rectify it or anything to, to run the backlights. So what we have here is a fuse, a uh, inductor. This is our switcher power supply. This is mostly the power supply right here. Um, let's see, we got lots of relays, useful components for sure. Any one of these, you might want to remove these transformers for a lot of reasons. These can be used for different things, including filtration. We have electrolytic capacitors, optocouplers, optoisolators, um, integrated circuits that, uh, and resistors. So, and you can see here where the board's been cracked. So this thing's been through... Uh, more than a few uh, uh, dings, but that doesn't matter for our purposes. We've got um, 450 volt, 150 microfarad. That's always good. We got heat sinks. Um, so let me break the board down a bit more as best as I can see what's going on here. This is a resistor uh, right here. Power resistor, capacitor, memo V, I think. It's a metal oxide bear resistor or something like that to control voltage. Um, AC, these are all filter matrix, this is diodes, uh, 
So the switching, this is hot side here, and of course you don't have flybacks in here, but this is our highest voltage uh, transformers here. These are the uh, either IGBTs or transistors that run it. They might be MOSFETs too, of course. Um, a lot of times these things do have IGBTs in them. Now we can look right here, and we can actually look these part numbers up once you get the uh, source right there. So this has got to be either an IGBT or a MOSFET. Some of these are pretty good. Um, there's S means source, so we got some sort of MOSFET type. And then RC, this is probably, uh, could be a diode array. I gotta look at it. But there's a transistor with a source. These are actually all MOSFETs except for the one in the middle. I don't think that one is. Um, and then these that don't have heat sinks may well be, yep, MOSFET. Uh, what's our number on this? IRFP something, or is it K3667? Okay, so it could be an IGBT or a MOSFET, actually. Um, resistors, a lot of stuff like that. Um, speakers, uh, I personally have tons of speakers. I don't need any more, but uh, these speakers actually can be pretty nice for, for their, uh, their outputs. We have the digital side of things here. And there's a lot. We have um, surface mount components like this chip here. Let's see if I recognize. I don't think I probably don't recognize this number. Um, but this is the part of the board that takes in the video signals and such. And there's probably another side of it. This is pretty much the heart of the microcontrollers here. So the TV is, is in these chips more or less. There may be some more on the other side of the board. And most of the, the power supply functions, filtration, high voltage is on this end. And we got a bus going here and here, meaning a whole bunch of connections that uh, feed the computers that run it now. And then the input comes in. We got another RF circuit like the CRT TV. Um, and that RF circuit is uh, an HDMI. And all that requires a lot of computing power. So we got these two chips here. And this is probably something like the main uh, microprocessor i'd have to look that up but the uh let's see um these you don't want to break these but i'm gonna i'm gonna open this up so that i can show you more of what's in the board okay we're back with the flat screen teardown and looking at this a little bit more i can see that basically this whole board is dedicated to high voltage and power supply um, filtration, this is where the uh, 120 volts comes in, 117, whatever. It's filtered to a switcher power supply. The uh, switching power supply is located after the filter, and we want to look for this sort of buck converter supply, and there's probably two of them, one for standby. So we have one transformer here. This is definitely a power transformer uh, for the mains, and it's small, but it works. We have another one here, but this is really small. This one is also a major power transformer at high frequency, so certainly there's a couple of sources of power coming off of here that power it. This is all power supply functions, though, on this board. So this is what, what generates the high voltage for the, t the tubes. you got fluorescent tubes in here, and what I've, what I've done is removed a lot of the screws. Whoa. Whoops. And I'm going to remove the rest of the screws in this thing this makes it easy I used to do this all by hand so an interesting little panel here if you can find out what they've got going you might be able to use this as an input for something because it may just be plus volt and then ground five volts five volts and uh, so, we'll uh, take some more screws out and I'll show you more about this. Okay, I'm beginning, continuing to tear down here. Remember, you don't want to break these, these very fragile tubes in here because they have mercury vapor. Um, and also, this thing needs to be unplugged, obviously, for some time. You want to keep it unplugged. They're pretty safe. It's not like the old CRTs that build up a lot of power. We're going to rip the power supply board out this time because... I may be able to actually reuse this, but I don't think I will. Um, it's got all these. These are the two connections that 
power the fluorescent backlights. Today they use LEDs, but uh, this is from about, I think, 2008, so they were still using fluorescent backlights, which can be really useful for Tesla coils because they're neat glass tubes, but they're very fragile. And these transformers put out several thousand volts. I doubt they're going to be good enough to run a, a Tesla coil pulse mode or something, but they're interesting, and we'll see what we can get out of them. I'm going to do some tests, because these two are very definitely high-voltage transformers. Um, you know, these three relays alone are, are worth it. The transformers here are worth it. The, the IGBT bastards or, or the MOSFETs, whatever they may be, I've, I've found a lot of them in the other ones. We've even got a... Uh, stamp here we can look at it. it might take us straight to the board I don't know okay there's some more components heat sinks are always a plus although these aren't the best um, I like the ones with uh, diode rays yeah these are silicon rectifiers so the power supply is rectified here and this is where most of the uh, this is probably a couple of volts like 12 volts and 3 volts or something like that 5 volts um, coming off here for, for operating the computer and the rest of the circuits. And then the uh, other supplies for the backlights. So, we can take this board, get some other connectors. You want to replace the backlights on these, good luck, because you got to tear this all down first. Um, what we've got here is another, another connection. Some of these you can easily disconnect. They're just taped on there. Although this one's built a little better than the other one I took apart a while back um, before I started doing all this YouTube stuff. So, way back in 2003, I took, about my, took apart my first flat screen because I was at a place at my dad's warehouse and they had a they had flat they had a flat screen that weighed about 250 pounds and it had a lot of fans and a lot of components. Okay, let's take a look at this board. There's, this is a board that there's not a lot of stuff on, but depending on how confident you are using it, we've got these surface mount chips. And this is basically the TV here. Uh, it's, it's guts, it's, or it's brains. Um, and then we have the signal inputs here, of course, RF. This is the old antenna. Uh, it'll certainly have digital too, but there's UHF coils and such. This is a tuner. This is a, you know, of course, PC input. This is a laser input. So there'd be a diode in here, some kind of um, photo. This is a, I believe this is a fiber optic input. If I believe this, so this is something you might want to take a look at. We got capacitors. We got inductors. These are all inductors right here. They look like capacitors. You can tell from the ferrite core. These are, th these are actually labeled with what they are as far as their, their value, 330. So um, that's going to be, uh, i got to look that up exactly, but that might be 330 uh, uh, micro uh, Henry's or something like that, but I'm going to look up the, uh, what they do with that. Um, this one, other 6R3, these are, these are inductors, and then we got these itty-bitty little chips here, surface mount. That could be almost anything. Uh, let's see. I'm get a lock on that. We've got 100 volt, you know, 100 to 10 volts only, but 100 mu f. Um, we got the S video port. We got the composite, the uh, RCA jacks for the regular video and audio. Um, the antenna input and HDMI, and all the chips that you know. This is all digitized. On the other side of the board, we have some SM. This is this is like, just like a computer motherboard, because it's essentially what it is, a little computer. And we have all this. It's all arranged in such a way that it won't uh, have any issues operating at high speed and, and doing all things. I mean, you can see. Look at that. You can actually see they've etched this so that you've got some inductance as coils on the printed circuit board. These right here. Um, may be useful as uh, almost a little quasi filter now, load. Um, interesting. Yeah, th I've seen this before, of course, in boards, but uh, uh, not very often in television. It's, they've changed the technology quite a bit. 
I mean, from the teardown of a color TV from back... Oh, here's a crystal. Always useful if you're stuck in a spot and you need a frequency. We got 25 megahertz in related harmonics here, it looks like. So about uh, 12 meters or something, yeah. Um, you could make a crystal oscillator out of that. We got chips here. What are these? Uh, some of these might be useful if you can get them off the board, and it's not impossible to do. I don't want to make this video too long, so what I'm going to do is show you the backlights. we got LEDs and anything else. You know, there's lots of stuff that's, that's obviously useful. You want to keep your hardware, too, because you never know when it's going to come in handy. So I put it I put it in, you know, unless it's totally junk, I put it in something. So we'll, we'll next get to the backlights and um, the rest of it. Okay, now to get to the backlights, we've got to get it open. Backlights are sometimes really, you don't want to break them. So, what we're going to do, I'm going to take this screw off. Well, that won't work. We need, I need to get a smaller bit. Okay, we're going to do that and get the backlights out. Okay, I know this is a long video. As I take this apart, I'm trying to explain as much as I can. Um, I don't know as much about these uh, types of TVs as I do, but they're LCD, and they're basically, if you know, back in the day when you had a small uh, color LCD television, this is a very much more powerful, much larger unit. Um, it's spraying from that, okay? Um, the original LCD TVs, it had a mirror, you know, they, they all sprang from that 20, 30 years ago. Um, they were just black and white, and we have here... A lot of diodes, they're marked. Some of them are marked as zeners and whatnot. Remember, they have repairman guides still on these things. So you can tell uh, what a lot of the components are. There's schematic symbols on here. We have service mount transistors, possibly FETs. These are probably NPNs. Um, we have uh, all sorts of chips, and I don't honestly know off the top of my hand what all these are. We're going to have some sound chips. We're going to have some other stuff. I don't see a, uh, an audio amplifier. It's obvious. Um, this is the power board. So everything on here is just basically for power supplies and stuff. For the power powering of the circuit. And this is the motherboard of, of uh, everything, as I've explained. And I'm going to get the rest of the screws out of here so we can see the backlights. Because those are the, the things. That, first, we want to get the... Uh, the screen off and be careful with some of this stuff because you don't want to get liquid crystal all over your face. Okay, now this is one of the more difficult parts. What I'm going to do is, is remove the LCD panel. And if this video is a little long, I'm doing what I can to explain what I can. Now you're going to have some, the same, just like a, just you're going to have IR sensors and I'll locate that at some point in here. So you can build your own remotes if you want to. Um, there's a lot of useful parts in today's junk laying around, especially I found a lot of stuff in that projection screen. A friend of mine had a great big projection screen, and I got the lenses out of it, and those are definitely worth getting. I couldn't make a video out at the time because there was a lot going on. Now here's the ribbon cable. Connects the each one of these ribbon cables has a lot of connections, probably in excess of a hundred, maybe even a thousand, and they all connect to the LCD so you can address every high definition pixel on here. And you have all these ribbon cables that are connected to do that job. You can see right here, each one of these has a lot of little connections. Let's see, look at that, that's like a hundred. I'm going to try to focus it for you. I don't always get the best macro with a phone. But I'm doing... There we go. See, each one of these is like 100 connections, probably 200 connections or more. Uh, and they just keep going and going and going. That's necessary because you have to address every part of this board and no matter how you do it, it's going to take a lot. And that's why the technology, one of the many reasons took so dang long to get this far. The, the technology for a flat screen TV was available in the early 90s, but it was too expensive. 
and it wasn't just really wasn't quite good enough so we're gonna pull all the screws and you want to just get all of them out of here without stripping them okay this is a part of the computer that from what I understand will address the rest of this so this is the controller chip that uh, is going to be addressing a large portion of the LCD panel which is going to be coming in probably in serial and then turned into a parallel of even more you, you know you need even more connections because you've got to you've got to address each pixel that is a lot of connections uh, no matter how you cut it it's going to require a lot of connections it's pretty astonishing that it, ooh, that it even works at all and as we try to tear this apart we end up with it's quite difficult to get this off but you can flip it open you can see the damage it was already cracked like that but this is an LCD panel that's been destroyed and uh, that's what it looks like so what we're gonna do is uh, this this panel Look at that. Came through the on the other side. That's where I hit it with the 602. It actually has some places that made it. Wow. That's the from the 602 there. Came around the other side of it. It actually appears to be made of glass. That's where the 602 hit it. That's uh, one of the projects I worked on I'm working on. If you look up laser rifle on my YouTube page. Well look at that. Yeah, this is the liquid crystal's all in here, but it's, you know, clearly been fractured to hell. You can't use that really for anything anymore. It's pretty much trash. You want to watch this glass, though, because it's there's a lot of glass in here. And it can be sharp, and it can be small. And uh, so you want to clean up when you're done. Now, this is now a light board. You could put, like, a, uh, things uh, transparencies on here and look at them. All we got to do is power up the backlights. It's not that hard. So you could use this as, as a way to look at uh, any kind of transparencies by powering up the backlight. A um, few thousand volts. You don't want it too bright. The brighter it is, these tubes usually last about 15,000 hours. I mean, 50,000, excuse me, hours, depending on... Excuse me. At least that's what I've read. About 50,000 hours. Um, we've got the connections here for the high voltage. But I want to show you what's inside. Uh, there's the, of course, these are the high voltage for the, the tubes inside these transformers. And a lot of people are into the high voltage parts and such, so I'm going to get into that um, and show you the tubes. This thing's a, a real mess now. We're going to take the rest of the screws out of it, and you could use it like this as a light, light box viewer. Okay, so what I'm going to do is pull it up, and here we go, presto. This is the gold. Now, we can leave this together and use it as a light box, which I may do. Because I got a friend of mine that wants to do transparencies. Look at all those tubes. They're all powered by those two transformers. And each one of these is a fluorescent cold cathode tube. They've only got two connections on them. They run them through a capacitor and charge them with an AC field. And what ends up happening is you get a bright light. They start to degrade. As you can see, there's a bit of browning on the side. And eventually, they'll get dimmer and dimmer. And you can even see here where they got pretty darn hot. Look at that. Um, they do get hot. You don't want to turn the brightness all the way up on these things. But you can actually remove them, and they will light up in the presence of high voltage. Um, now, they're very fragile, though, so if I do remove it, yeah, these are, these are glass, but you can actually bend them slightly. They will break very easily. I'm thinking because i got a friend that needs a light box of... He's got transparencies from everything. He's got uh, all sorts of things he wants to look at, and so um, this might be what I use, because all I've got to do is put the screws back in 
and hook these two wires here up to the right voltage. In this case, we'll just start low and bring it up, you know, uh, 500 to 1,000 oscillated high frequency AC through capacitors. We pretty much emulate or even use the same transformer. We got the board here. These are the two transformers that do it. These are the capacitors that isolate, and these are the two connectors. And the oscillator here is post all the filtration and such. And now it kind of explains the most the wattage that this thing pulls probably comes through this transformer for these two transformers to run the backlights. The LEDs are more efficient. Um, the backlights are high voltage though, and that's what makes it fun. You're not going to get huge arcs out of these. They, they have a tendency, especially the smaller ones, to inter arc, uh, to burn out their own core if you put too much power into them. So you really want to bring them up slowly, and I wouldn't expect more than a few thousand volts or an arc about maybe that long. I haven't tested it yet, but we're talking about AC and very thin wire. It's easy for these things to burn out if you uh, put too much power into them. Um, they certainly don't have the same effect as a flyback for a color television that can put out, you know, 30,000 or more volts. So we have uh, resistors that are marked with the value. You got, always got to love that. Uh, you know, um, all sorts of useful, obvious components. So here's a flat screen teardown. Some basics on how it works. Um, this is more or less the brains. So we got the TV in here. And here, I'd have to look those chips up, chips up to actually be sure but, uh, exactly which one does what. But these are going to be responsible for most of the decision making in the television and the uh, digital uh, stuff that makes the, the, the screen uh, appear. We've got another crystal here that's 27 megahertz on the dot, looks like. 27.00, yep. So. We've got a diode. This is an, a surface mount diode right here, and you can tell from the band. There's a, always going to be a. These diodes have a little band on them. So um, this is a long video. Hopefully the lighting's better from my last one about the CRT unit, and I finally got this done. Um, and if you have any questions, let me know. These are capacitors. These are relays. So these are relays. Capacitors and the board is is marked capacitors. The board is marked heat sink, and of course high frequency transformer. If you put 60 hertz into this transformer, it'll explode. It'll just pop. It'll blow like a fuse. If you put 8,000 or 20,000 or so hertz into this thing, it'll work as a power supply. The uh, the frequency is is determined by the ferrite core and the number of turns. So they found a long time ago that instead of having a big fist size or larger transformer to run things, you just convert the AC to DC coming inbound from the outlet here. You, after you've done that through that rectifier, you gen it's basically an inverter circuit. And so instead of having to rely on a big honking dangerous 60 hertz transformer, they use uh, these uh, ferrite core transformers. It can be run at much higher frequencies and they're much lighter. And the same is true with these two for powering the lights. There's a lot of lights, that's why they're so big. This thing has quite the backlight set up. It kind of astonishes and kind of is bizarre the way that's burned in there. <laughs> so, yeah, it's not really bad, but these things do get hot. If you have a backlight uh, that isn't LED, and even if it is, it'll last longer if you don't turn it all the way up. Um, high brightness, bad idea. As I say, back in the 90s, I was reading about these things. They last about... 50,000 hours, and if you leave, you know, I, I had a, a, a laptop that uh, lasted for years and years, ten, over 10 years, and it finally started to flicker toward the end, but I almost always kept the brightness down to zero as a religion, almost, you know, uh, metaphorically, so I, 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 so this is another input here, we've got, looks like S video, um, this is, yeah. So, uh, this is the side here. We got another HDMI and an SD card slot. So, this had a lot of features. This, uh, these are the computers that run it. It's, you know, two boards, except for the other one that runs the, uh, oh, and the IR sensor may be located in something like this. You want to take, this is, these buttons, you know, you could add them to something. 
There may be a chip in here you can power with 5 volts and it'll give you a signal each time you hit that's different, each one of these buttons, depending on how they did it. Um, you can address these buttons and it looks like there's something going on inside, like a chip in here, but I'm not sure yet. Three wires. So, Alright, well thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please uh, leave comments and or contact me on Facebook. Uh, mostly macros research. These backlights are great. If you you got to remove them very, very carefully. But if you remove one, you can actually use them for test the coils and see them light up very brightly as they get anywhere near a high voltage source just by holding it. They're mini fluorescent high brightness light bulbs. They're really bright. So uh, a lot of fun. A lot of fun. So we got ceramic resistors. And there's a lot of stuff here. So don't... Yeah, one man's trash is another man's treasure. And you can always use... Uh, some of these metallic components, hardware, whatever, if you have use for them. If not, scrap them. But there's certainly a lot of parts to be removed here and uh, components that can be used. Please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching my videos. I finally got the flat screen uh, teardown video.